Hello guys! In this video I show you how to drive your car at its limits. You'd say to me, oh, that's quite simple, just drive it faster as you can. Mm, yes, but uh, actually no. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a different question to understand better the concept I want to explain you. How can you understand you're driving your car at to its limits? So, let's start step by step. What are the two elements which allow you to understand you reach the grip limits of your tires? The understeer and oversteer, of course. As you saw in my previous videos, every car has its own way to react when you reach the grip limits according to wheelbase, drivetrain, setup, etc. So I want to explain it again. Well, when you drive a car to its limits on corner, you have to touch constantly the understeer and oversteer, or both, to understand if you're using all the grip of your tires. So, if you aren't feeling the understeer or oversteer, sure you aren't driving it at its limits. Just a little but important precision. You mustn't find the oversteer or the understeer on the course. They have to come naturally from your car. Because, uh, of course, I could start oversteering or understeering on purpose, but uh, this doesn't mean I'm using the full potential of the car. I saw countless comments about people having trouble braking. And most common problem of these people is that they think that late braking is a good way to take a corner. Big mistake! <coughs> this goes against the golden rule slow in, fast out enter the corner slower to exit faster. So, if you are a beginner, use this rule. Make uh, it as your religion. When you start to get confident with the braking and you have more experience, we can start talking about the trial braking. Often, when I see beginners to brake earlier, they tell me, okay, but uh, then uh, why there are other people who manage to brake later than me and exit faster as well? Simply, they use the trial braking. This technique shows you are really driving your car to the its limits. In simple words, trail braking consists in modulated braking rightly according to the speed, to the steering wheel angle, to the corner and to the surface conformation. For example, if you fully brake while cornering, this happens often on late braking, 
your car will tend to go straight, losing the ideal racing line. That's because you're using the tires to turn. If you demand your tire to turn and the brake, obviously they can do both actions with the same effectiveness. But if you brake gradually, you can turn and brake later without losing the grip and without losing the racing line. What's the problem? Why can't everyone do that? That's because uh, you need a great sensitiveness on your foot while braking and uh, you need experience to understand how much you can delay the braking. By the way, as I say often, unlike Colin McRae, in doubt, brake earlier. Don't take stupid risks. When you accelerate, especially with a powerful car, the wheel drive spins. Easy! If the wheel spins, that means we are exceeding the limit. Easy again! So, our goal is to avoid exceeding that limit. That's a little bit harder. <laughs> On straight line things are easier. With powerful cars we have just to push gradually the throttle according to the speed. Lower is the speed, lower has to be the throttle level. On corners, things are other because uh, we don't have just to watch the speed, but also at uh, the corner angle. It's basically the same uh, reasoning of the trail braking, but uh, a period for the acceleration. So, in this case, the goal is to find the perfect balance between throttle, speed and steering, to have the max traction on corner exits. It's uh, something uh, you know already, but I remind you this. Wider is the corner angle, the more you can press the throttle. Let's imagine we are old skilled driver and we are able to exploit the car limits all the time. Some cars manage to stand all the stress and uh, solicitation while racing at the limit, but uh, other cars can't be driving at the limit all the time. For example, 
uh, some cars suffer from engine overheating. Older cars suffer from tires overheating. While other cars have uh, all the problems uh, and uh, you can drive them uh, to the real limits. And uh, nowadays you have to know even with virtual cars in some racing games are fragile, not just the real ones. So, in this case, our goal is to drive the car with a little margin to prevent damaging it. So, drive clean, avoid drifting, avoid hitting the rev limiter, I mean, uh, don't torture your car too much. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to exploit the full potential of the car with the default setup. For that reason, we must set up the car. But uh, things aren't that easy. Uh, when we set up a car, we have to choose between two ways. One, making the car faster to exploit its true limits. Two, making our car easier to drive to allow us to drive it at our limits. See the difference? If you're a pro driver, go with the fifth choice. If your mistake ratio is too high for you, set up the car up in the second choice. Remember to test the car, trying to force its reaction. And discover how it reacts to see what's wrong with it. At this point, uh, you asked me, OK, but how can I make the car easier to drive? Set it up to have more understeer. I mean, uh, increase the rear downforce, set uh, a softer rear anti-roll bar, set a differential with a low block. Why? Because a car with understeer is generally easier to drive than a car with oversteer. Well, I hope uh, this video will help you to know better the world of sim racing and uh, it will help you to drive uh, your car to your limits. See you and drive carefully!